Hello, my friends. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Almighty God, the Spirit who guided the Lord Jesus Christ, may He come to also guide you in the knowledge of His truth, of His Word that is holy. May the Holy Spirit come to do what only He can do. Only the Holy Spirit can convince, convince, and if He does not convince, then it's pointless for us to engage in debates and try this and that, using every argument available, because people who do not have the Holy Spirit, who are not convinced by Him, they will not understand. And it's important to say this, because sometimes you are confronted by people who ask nonsense questions, questions that are malicious, that they already know the answer to, but they still want to use those questions as a trap for you to fall and contradict yourself. Do not waste your time trying to justify the unjustifiable, trying to answer those who have been confronting you, especially now in these last days with regards to politics and the decisions that everybody has the right to make on their own. So, may the Holy Spirit convince you. For example, you say like this, Bishop, I prayed, I fasted, I fought with all my strength in order to elect Bolsonaro as president, but he lost, he lost, but maybe he didn't lose at all, he actually won. <laughs> if he is of God, then he won, if he is not of God, then he lost. The title, it's pointless, what we are dealing with here is something eternal something eternal. So, for example, when we spoke about this, that we, when we do our part, we pray, we fast, we cry out to God, and God does not answer us according to our will. He answers us according to His will. Because when we fasted, we prayed and we asked God, but we also said, Lord, let your will be done. And I'm sure God has done His will. And Lula was elected. Very well. God has done His will. How are you going to understand this? It's simple for you to understand. Pay attention. The Word of God is very nice. When the Lord Jesus was there in the Garden of Gethsemane before, a few hours before being arrested and condemned and sacrificed. Jesus, in the highest level of his pain, he prayed and said to the Father, to the Father, he was faithful and perfectly loyal and a servant of the Father, and he said, Father, if possible, pass this cup away from me. Three times Jesus prayed like that. He had already reached the highest level of his pain. Three times he asked the Father, and God, the Father, saw that, and didn't say anything. But he allowed 
that whatever his son had to go through, the father allowed him. The father didn't say, okay, let me resolve this for you. Let me take you out of this situation. No, the father did not answer him according to his will, the Lord Jesus' will, the Son of Man, but he answered him according to his own will, the will of the Father, because he, the Son, had prayed, pass this cup away from me, however, not my will be done, but yours, which means Jesus asked something for himself personally, however, he also submitted his will to the will of the Father. He submitted his own will to the will of his Father. And the Father did his will, the will of the Father, not of the Son. And he was arrested, condemned, crucified, and so on and so on. You already know the story. And the same thing happened with the Apostle Paul. Paul asked God, Lord, please, he said, he said, Lord, please remove this thorn, this problem that I'm going through, this pain, this thorn in my flesh, this situation. Three times Paul asked in order for God to remove that pain, that situation he was facing that thorn in his flesh, a messenger of Satan. And what did the father do? Did he remove it? No. He answered like that to Paul, his son. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is enough for you. I am not going to remove the thorn, but I am with you. And Paul had to continue in that situation because it was the will of the Father. So the question is, why wasn't the thorn removed from Paul's flesh? Why didn't he take it out? Because it was something beneficial to Paul. Paul, if in case God had removed the thorn from his flesh, which was a messenger of Satan, Paul would become proud and vain. That's what is written. God said that in order for you not to become vain and proud, so God allows the thorns to be in our flesh for us not to, to become proud, for us not to get proud and think we are somebody and be vain for our own good. Therefore, my dear friend, this answers our prayers. God has done His will, and I will tell you something. If God, if the Father had heard the prayer of the Lord Jesus and answered to the will of Jesus in that moment, we wouldn't be here preaching the gospel. I wouldn't have been saved, and neither would you, isn't it? Very well. The same thing with the Apostle Paul. If he had been answered, if the thorn had been removed from his flesh, he would become like Saul, that after became a king, became proud, all puffed up, and he turned against God himself. So God allowed, God knows all things. He knows the past, the present, the future. He sees our lives as a whole. He sees everything. He foresees everything. So, in regards to this situation, the political situation in Brazil, thank God. Was it my will? No. I wouldn't have done it this way. I wanted Bolsonaro to win. However, Lula won. Thank God. If it had been Bolsonaro, I would have said, thank God. Was it the other one? Okay, thank God. Why? Because the Son rejoices in doing an answer to the will of the Father. That's what happened to Jesus. He was comforted by the Holy Spirit. Paul was also comforted by the Word of God. My grace is sufficient. 
because your weakness, the weakness that you are facing now is made perfect in the strength of God, in God's power. Whoever is a child of God, whoever is born of God, those who are not goats, those who are not goats that will be placed on the left because the sheep are going to be placed on the right and the goats will be placed on the left, which will be punished and sentenced to eternal condemnation. But the sheep will be with the good shepherd and whoever is a sheep understands when their will is not done by the will of the Father. <laughs> Isn't it glorious? This is extremely glorious. Whoever is a child of God understands. Those who are not children, they fight, they struggle, they fight with others. I don't accept. And, and it's pointless to try to defend and resist. It's pointless to try to convince anybody because it was the will of the Father. So I am convinced that God has done His will. May God bless you, my friend, and give you this understanding because whoever is a child of God understands. Those who are not His children, they won't understand anything and they will be talking nonsense. The right won. What is right has won. Isn't it what we asked? And what is right is the will of the Father. Thank God. Thank God. Learn this. Live upon these principles because God is not a magician. He is not going to perform magic in order to fulfill the whims of our flesh. No. He does according to His will because His will is better than, than our own. Greater things are coming because just as the Lord Jesus came and became our Lord and Savior because He submitted to the will of the Father in the same way it's going to happen now. God will be glorified through you and many souls are going to be saved to Jesus under this new government of the new president. You can be certain, you can be sure of that. You can be sure because God does not do anything wrong. God never fails, He never makes a mistake. He does not fail. Everything He does is good. Everything that I went through in my life, all the sufferings, all the deserts and injustices and defamation, going to prison, everything that Esther and I suffered from the very beginning Today, we give thanks to God. But back then, we were asking, please pass this cup away from us, Lord. I don't want this. Lord, I'm going to run away. Lord, please take me away from here. We had to bear that situation. And today, we give thanks to God because He kept us. And what we went through, the thorns that we had to face the injustices and defamations and the, the hatred, the persecution, everything, everything was only to help us exercise our faith, to mature our faith in order for us to be able to pass on to you who are coming now what God has given us. The experiences that God gave us through the deserts that we faced. So we pass it on to you. It doesn't mean that my experiences are going to resolve your problems, not at all. But they will help you have the understanding that the Christian life is like this. The Bible says here that Jesus came into the world for those who are His own, but His own did not accept Him. They rejected Him. But all those who received Him, and I was one of them, to them He gave the right, the right to become children of God. Children of God. To those who believe in His name. 
who were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I was first born out of my mother's and my father's will. They generated me. But when I met my Lord Jesus, when I gave, when I heard the word of God and I gave my life to him, then he made me born again. I am not a child of my father and my mother anymore. My nature is now spiritual, not fleshly. I am no longer a son of the blood or of the will of the flesh, and let alone of the will of man, but the will of my eternal Father, the Lord God, the Almighty, the Father of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus. Thank God. Today is All Saints Day. People celebrate the dead. And you perhaps, when you go to celebrate the dead, Obviously, you do so because you don't know where they are. So you pray for them, isn't it? And so on. You bring them flowers to the, their grave, and that's how it usually goes. But those who are children of God, they have the assurance of where they are going and where their loved ones are also. If they were born of God, of course, if they were truly of God. So this, continuing the faith, from faith to faith and by faith, desiring to one day be where their family members are as well in this moment. So our prayer is for those, is for the souls that are living in this world and they are suffering with depression, with the problems that they have been going through, whatever is the problem they face, that there, there is afflicting their souls. Today, we are going to have the night vigil of resurrection, which will start at 6 p.m., the night vigil of resurrection, a mini night vigil. So it's only for those who want to be born of God, only for those who want to strengthen their faith, those who want to have a deeper intimacy with the Lord. So tonight in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God, the night vigil of resurrection, the night vigil of resurrection, while the world is inclined towards celebrating the dead, we are going to pray, cry out, seek the resurrection, resurrection of those who are like zombies, dead alive in the world. If you want to participate tonight at 6 p.m., exactly at 6, it will start at 6 and it will finish around 8 or 8.30 p.m. I'm not sure how long it will take, but the invitation is there. It's up to you to either you go or stay where you are. May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.